Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Jewish Matrix. Once again, I'm your host. Um, <laughs> that's just probably going to become uh, a, an opening with, you know, maybe some nice, uh, what, flash animation or something. It's, it's definitely, it's catchy. It's catchy. I think it's, I think it's, I'm going to have to learn how to program that and uh, make it my official intro. Um, Derek, I saw your, your second video, and uh, you're, you're a real mensch for, uh, for standing up to um, this, this cra these crazy ideas um, and these people who obviously just don't know anything about the subject um, of Israel. Um, I, I had a really good meeting with my rabbi today. The, the topic of conversation was Israel. And, um, you know, I, I discussed with him um, kind of what's been going on around here and um, the fact that uh, um, a lot of people have, um, you know, just pretty much, you know, told me to uh, take a hike because I uh, support Israel's right to exist and, and defend itself. Um, and uh, also, uh, you know, I've been called a bigot uh, because I don't like Hamas. I don't like a terrorist organization, and I, I guess that gives the uh, the the stupid left uh, permission to call me a bigot. I mean, it's just ridiculous. Um, you know, nobody's going to deny that there are problems in the Middle East, uh, but you know, just sitting there and smearing Israel continually is just something that people who have no understanding of the subject, if that's what they engage in. Um, you know, and, and while I was there, um, I was really happy to see that uh, uh, they had uh, these, uh, these postcards. Uh, pictured on it is Galad Shalit. Galad Shalit is an IDF soldier who was captured on uh, June 25, 2006 by Hamas. And uh, according to ish international law, uh, Gilad Shalit is entitled um, to have a visit uh, with the Red Cross. Um, but when you're dealing with Hamas, a terrorist organization, they don't play by international rules. Uh, so therefore, uh, Gilad Shalit is coming up uh, on his uh, fifth year of being uh, held captive uh, by Hamas. Um, we talked about the IDF, um, we talked about, uh, how it's, it's not as, um, uh, we compared it to the American military and how it's not as, uh, what's, what's the word I'm looking for? It's not, um, as heavily based, and here comes a siren, oh, it went away, it's not as heavily based on, um, rank, um, you know, uh, he told me a story about how, you know, uh, a, a, a junior officer will, you know, tell a senior officer, you know, uh, you know, can, can get, when you, if you get a cup of coffee, get me a cup of coffee too. Um, and uh, we talked about why the IDF is the most um, successful uh, military in the world. And it has to do with, well, that. Um, the fact that it's not such a, a heavy top-down management structure. Um, but also it has to do with the intense planning and the, uh, the sort of uh, activities that go on um, after an operation is carried out. You know, the other day, uh, I was watching an IDF operation, I believe it was in Lebanon, um, and uh, it, was, it was so, it was so incredible to see these soldiers, you know, they're going into um, a really dangerous area, and um, when the operation was over, um, you know, they're, uh, it was just such a display of, um, like, their, their commander, um, he didn't just say, mmm, good job, really cold, you know. He made sure he, he touched every single one of them, 
told them what a good job they did. He addresses them by name, not by rank. Um, and then afterwards, they will sit down and they will talk about the mission. And they will, um, they will try to find any flaws in it. They will dissect it, he says. They'll dissect it and find any flaws so that they can learn from it so next time uh, they will not repeat the same mistakes. And uh, I think that's why throughout the years uh, when uh, every country surrounding tiny little Israel, every Arab country surrounding Israel has tried so, so hard to destroy Israel but haven't been able to. And if you look at a map, I know a lot of you have difficulties with reading maps. But if you look at a map, you'll see just how tiny Israel is compared to uh, its surrounding Arab nations who are constantly trying to destroy it. And you'll, I mean, it's just an amazing, um, it's just an amazing feat that the IDF is, you know, especially, um, you know, the Six Day War, I mean, in six days, it was over, um, and and the, and they were attacked from all sides. Israel was, and this brings me to um, my next point um, regarding Derek's first video on the subject. Um, somebody was telling me that you know that we need to go by uh, civilian casualty numbers in order to determine who's the bad, who's the bad kid on the block, and uh, you know that that's that's really silly. Um, there's no contextual information in that. Um, and not only that, like I said in, you know, in a comment, Hamas hides behind its own civilians. Um, and I even put a link there that showed pictures of Hamas hiding behind women and children. Um, and, you know, a picture tells a thousand words, you know. So if you want to see that link, go to Derek's first video, it's in the comment section, and see for yourself that, you know, no, we're, we're, nobody's making this up. Hamas really does that. Um, what else? What else do I want to make sure I cover? Um, yeah, I mean, this whole stuff about, you know, 67 borders and all that nonsense, let me tell you something. If you knew anything about strategy, if you knew anything about the Six-Day War, um, you would understand that um, in war, sometimes um, parcels of land are taken. And they're taken because it um, prevents further attacks from happening again. And this is where Israel has a right to exist and defend itself. Um, without um, without the West Bank, Israel is only nine miles wide, and that leaves Israel open to um, to another uh, you know attack upon its upon its nation, and that's not right. That's not right. I mean, this this whole all this talk about these 1967 borders. I'm gonna tell everybody right now, it's never gonna happen. Israel is not going to go back to 1967 borders. It's not going to happen. It leaves Israel wide open. And that was that was the issue before. And it's the issue now. Arabs just want the Jews dead. And the fact that none of you will go off and read and understand that it's not about land. It's not about any of that. Arabs have plenty of land. Plenty of land. It's about destroying Israel. That is their main goal, okay? And that is what you're supporting. This is what you support. Um, when you make these ridiculous uh, comments and claims. Um, I do want to recommend a couple of books. Um, my rabbi recommended them to me too. Of course, one of them is by Alan Dershowitz. Um, and a lot of times on these comment sections where you see all this Israeli bashing, you'll see, uh, you know, Israeli uh, patriots coming in, uh, quoting Dershowitz because he wrote an excellent book on the subject. Uh, and let me, I'm going to get this book. I mean, I'm, I've known about it already, but 
Um, now, now it's definitely time to get it. It's called The Case for Israel by Alan Dershowitz. I think everybody should read that. I'm going to put the links to these two books in the low bar so people can educate themselves about Israel. Um, the next one is called Startup Nation, the story of Israel's economic miracles, and that one is by Saul Singer and uh, Dan Signor, and that is also an excellent, excellent book recommended to me by my rabbi regarding Israel. Um, so I'll put those links in the low bar. Uh, I'll put the Amazon links, and I really highly recommend that people get educated and read and and learn. Um, I have also, you know, my rabbi and I talked about this today. I am not going to apologize for Israel. So, you know, when people start, you know, thinking that I should, that's when you know that I'm never going to do it. I'm not going to apologize for Israel. Ever. Ever. It's not going to happen. Um, I am... I know what's right and what's wrong. And I know that Israel is the only free democratic society in that entire area. And I know that that the Arab nations around it are just bent on its destruction. And I'm going to do everything I can as a Jew to make sure nothing happens. Nothing happens to the land of Israel. Shalom.